Liquid. That's the VP Prodigy, not the real VP. It's the uh, it's the other VP as the all the greatest one. teams. The, the be <laughs> yeah, the better one. Thinking back over the last two or three years, he's had like some standout games, but he's just had this tendency of making top unforced errors, basically. He's just Oracle been so stepping stable. Trouble. Yep, Ayn is dead. Good for Insane, he has got him. You should have the upper hand minute 10 with a level 6 centaur. Both your Ember and Quap are monsters minute 10. These heroes are so good right then. Oh, opening it. Time... Yeah, Epikid's looking to fight. The Shackle is out over on Mickey and uh, Liquid bring in three players. Epikid hasn't left here just yet. And with the arrival of FN under the cover of an Invis rune, he just wants to quickly pick off Tiger. No defensive disruption available. The power shot helping with the extra tick. Ember Spirit, he didn't have to do that, but he did it anyway. Mickey can handle it with the physical spell damage. It's obviously really good against the Siege Creep, so <laughs> didn't get too much out of this. Tiger's got the perfect trip stack. Three camps all at the same time. Bottom lane, More. Ember Spirit, he's in a lot of trouble. Getting caught out. Oracle's trying to give him the extra survivor pill. The Epic Kid's able to actually have it. Monkey King not hitting the perfect balance strike, and Hefe comes in. The Sonic Wave mopping up Boxy and Koifa, moving into Insania. Thought Pro, they lose the Oracle. There are five heroes from Prodigy, they're all gathering up together in mid. They really want to be able to find another, another engagement. Smoked up. Mickey farming up stacks. Feels like we've seen this before. And now the jump comes in. Perfect horse stop in from DM. Support can be there from Tiger for a defensive disruption. He has to let it out now, but the Stampede lets VP just move forward to kill off Tiger first, then come back for Mickey. When they began this engagement, and Liquid losing two so quickly before the 15 minute mark. But at the same time, you feel like you need to protect the key heroes at the right times. It's just a very difficult balance to strike. Obviously, Prodigy did a good job at identifying when they could invade and get kills on Mickey. They might try again here. Yeah, they are. Tiger walks up, happen. defensive disruption, and uh, they'll give it another shot. Fortune End's not going to be able to connect, and even Grimstroke will be there for the extra silence, but it's a good route. And the Sonic Wave committal, and the blink forward from save. That was a curve shot. Remember when, when it comes said it to the shackle happening? shot? It was happening. Yeah. Okay, Inside this, this mid lane. This is the moment, actually, for Liquid. This is their chance. Gonna smoke up. Who they got? FN going forward. Boxy able to get the roar off. They need a chain stun to work with the extra follow up silence. Can they get the kill disruption? It's out from Tiger. It almost bought enough time to get away to save. But no, FN gets slapped down. And now the easy TP out from Centaur. They have enough damage. Nope. I don't know what gonna get a really kill good here. here. Like sometimes you buy Abyssal, but I don't think you buy it in this slot. Uh, you could <laughs> finish the pipe, but that doesn't feel too good either. It's too late for that. So yeah, Tiger. Like oh. See you, Tiger. Now, there's a quick little stampede to also help out in bottom lane. FN chasing down Koifa. Let's the Sonic Wave go. Monkey King able to get off the tree in time as FN blinks forward. The now save will arrive. The Shackle flies forward. And Monkey King, who normally loves playing around the trees, it becomes his own worst enemy. That actually would have been his full halberd. The jump on this back they too. are. Of some forward, Koifa still wondering if he needs to go forward. Tiger lets the purge out over on the center. Lotus Orb comes a little bit too late, and DM just really doesn't have a life to survive. Boxy goes straight for the roar on the Oracle. Play around him or pop, pop, pick him off. That's what they've got. Centaur still not dead yet, while both the supports of Liquid, they will fall. Oracle has himself a buyback. Can't say the same from the Liquid supports, and now surrounded on all sides. Mickey wants a little oh, cover the shackle. Save oh, Koifa three, Koifa. Oh, he wasn't hoping for that one. Now he'll come down to the Wukong's command. It's doing good work. Ember Spirit's losing a lot of life, but he has ended up being shackled to the range creep that was still surviving. Save doing such great work with the Spirit Vessel down. Koip has got no extra life steal. And many cores dead from Liquid means they cannot defend this mid lane. Again, if I could only see their vision the whole game, maybe it makes a lot more sense. Like maybe Prodigy are just pushing waves way better and having way more vision the whole time as Boxy will get solo killed by Epikid bottom. Uh-huh. He doesn't have buyback. Just... No, he does not. The only ones who have buyback are Bristle and the two supports of Liquid. And Epikid oh, just gives him the extra tip and now Bristle back. Also in a little bit of trouble. Goodbye, Tiger, but that's why they have your money. Insania needs to try and clean up the creep wave, which is still also inside the base. Purges are out, but Centaur doesn't care. In fact, most of Prodigy don't care. They run forward. Mickey's trying to build up some cool stacks. He has something going here, but now he's shackled to the Ember Spirit fake. They got created by Tiger, who FM will now finally get rid of Tiger in the back lines. No buyback for him. They're all gone. And Monkey King's doing everything he can inside the Wukong's command, and he is able to do something. 
Okay, maybe he's not. The slide of fist dodges out and Shackles now out from save and all the stun controllers there. This game's over. It's done. It's dusted. Mickey might be alive, but Liquid's hopes are dead in game one. Prodigy have just controlled this game from the very get-go. But Liquid want to keep fighting. Has he missed a shackle, actually? Oh, he has. Oh, oh the no. tree shackle. <laughs> He's GG shackling, not? too. Style points. <laughs> Get it in I've seen there. That, I've seen that with Mars uh, putting putting down the Ironwood tree and then spearing into it. That one's a little harder to claim. He's oh, just that's taunting plan. him now. This is, this is Mickey's plan. Wait until all the mana is gone. <laughs> and then again, he just gets one charges and they fight again. There's so many trees to work with. Roar? And now, Raw? Maybe Ember Spirit. No, again. not maybe Ember Spirit. The shackle just connects too easily. GG. Damn. That is the best Windrunner support performance I've ever seen in a pro game. I am pretty confident in saying that. And I've seen quite a few. All right. Yeah. Well, Carl said it needs to be a 2 to 1 kill ratio, and we'll see if Liquid can actually pull this off and take us to a 2 to 1 score overall. <laughs> and that'll hurt. Assaults to the wound, but the wound isn't And they want to go bad. on top? I mean, <laughs> he just did a zero Zero's damage. Zero forward. Aina's in a lot of trouble, and Tiger's got the tick damage, even Epic Kid, all that regeneration that was never used because it wasn't there, means that the Tiger actually gets a double kill on this offlane of Team Liquid. Their offlaners kind of feel like they need to function, like mobility items um, or upgraded boots. Epic Kid. Oh. They're just talking him for the moment. Sentry Ward's down everywhere. Stampede has to be useless. Not enough mana for a hoof stop. Actually, he does have the one charge as Monkey King can't dodge it. And with the damage from Clinks, oh, well, then again, maybe from the Boundless Strike, it could be Clinks who's the one to go down. FN came in so quick to be part of this fight. And the Centaur just continues to tick out. The Death Pulse is chasing him. Yeah. And in fact, the heal from Oracle is now helping Centaur a Here little bit to get hand. back. So now Razor can arrive. And we turn back the opposite direction. Static Link it up. FN will get his TP out to safety. And Tiger has no extra control to really kill off the Oracle unless Oracle turns around and then just disarms the Razor. 95 stolen damage, hit what? But they also want him to scale. So now that this timing has been hit where they have the Yule's Blade Mill as well as the Echo Saber and Monkey King, they want to fight. But going so miss the dagger. Oh. Boundless Strike begins it all up. Oracle's got the extra control. Reaper side, coin for just deleted. 70 seconds he is down. Buyback is available. And the rest of Team Liquid are now coming to the mid lane. The Blink Dagger from Boxy. The buyback from Razor will be worthwhile if you can find yourself a kill. The double hoofs on Boxy hits the back line and the soul by in silence. And Mickey going to work. Combining that with the Wukong's command, maybe Prodigy can start turning this one around. But Monkey King just stands in the middle and dies in the middle of the Wukong's command. Turn on the Sun Ray. Turn on the Blade Mal Burn too. A quick prod of Atos oh, Tiger. Secured by save. But they're going in deeper. Boxy. Blinked in, couldn't get the stun out. But Mickey getting back-to-back -back kills. That is very true. Should not disregard that fact. Definitely, uh, definitely helps out. Pit, Aetos, Boxy, thinks about helping. Gets a hoof stomp, but only onto the Rubik, who ends up stealing Stroke of Fate. Not a bad steal to have, but the Sunray is burning safe down. But un back into the pit, Tiger just kept moving forward. Necrophos does not have the Reaper Sight available, but they just keep the dust going. And now Ooh. another great pit from DM. Both Mickey as well as Insania on the retreat, but couldn't get back. Not in time to get out of range to the pit. But they don't yep. bring the Razor. But He's now not there side. just yet. And now, hoofs on forward. Boxy gets the initial jump over on the Oracle. Tiger wants to help out too. Disarm. Oracle is trying to get himself further out of here. But the pit, the control, Centaur, he needs some extra help. But the Reaper Scythe will take him out for a minute. Tiger also on the retreat. It looks like, yep, Prodigy will have to move outside the Wukongs. I, I want to say today, but... They, they've obviously had some good moves earlier this game. It's just this jump, Centaur jumping the Oracle in the middle of the forest with nobody around him to help get the kill. And now you may lose quite for anyway. Uh, he's got a Yule Scepter available. Starts with the Static Link of the Monkey King, forcing him away, but it's the Rod of Atos into the pit. He'll hit the deck, rooted once again. Mickey can at least pick off Aina. So what was really burnt from that? Like, uh, you lost Eye of the Storm on Koipva. That's, that's that's kind of it, but now it. Prodigy push the mid lane. Necro, a pretty big target underneath the tower. They're focusing him down, but the false promise. Oracle didn't get stunned in time, so he gets it out on the Necro, who will also be yulsed into the air. Does anyone else want to follow up on this? Necro is just oh, staying. I don't care. FN cool. now the Reaper Scythe Razor dead for 90 seconds. No buyback is available. They clean up the burning army. Oh, 
he and Proji will keep the push going. It's the it's the access point you have to this fight. They're wrapping all the way behind, and Oracle is going to be there, but I'm seeing two couriers coming in. Oh. One's got the headrest in the top. I see three couriers coming in. The army, the squadron has arrived from Prodigy. Grimstroke quickly deleted, and now Razor isolated inside the Wukongs and the Pity has to PKB. At least he's able to get that one off this time around as they bow the burning army inside the tree line. This might be okay if Liquid can get a couple more kills. They got the Oracle, now into the Supernova. Prodigy had to go on full retreat. FN cannot do it, however. Yule's brought down. Underlord stunned up. Box, he wants to get the chain stun out. Your buyback comes in from Oracle. So Fortune's end now is actually going to be there. False promise, DM, get the hell out. Full Uber back to safety. They believe they can do this now that Deso's on the monkey. Yeah, this is not guaranteed, and I think. Like, was going to smoke again. But the creep wave, it's pushing up mid. I don't think they, do they get they there in time? They can't do it in time. No, they can't. And they don't have Monkey King ulti this time. So this fight what is... What a smoke. That's why it's going to break over from the Rubik. Hoffs up! Here's the target, Boxy catching out two DM as well as Rubik. They're going down so damn far, safe. He's being saved by his own ghost. Now Icarus dive into the supernova, but you've lost clinks. Your damage isn't there. Epic Kids trying to take care of the supernova. Everyone coming in together and doesn't get off in time. Tiger needed a fraction of a second longer. Fox doing everything he can, but he's losing his heroes. The Reaper Scythe putting down the Razor, and now Grimstroke, the last one to die. Five gone from Liquid, Prodigy. Everybody is up. The Clink's walking in to start dealing the damage immediately gets lifted by Rubik and just taken out. Clink's is a, the majority of their damage and he couldn't get it done. He's, if you, even if you get the jump, if Clink's doesn't get a free angle, he is so counterable right now. It goes so fast. It's probably the reason he ventures outside of the base to begin with, is that he sees these two cores top, so he feels safe. Is he inked Jump in. Yep, they're just using the bait of the, of the beginning Aegis, the immortal from the Necro Forest, battling inside the Wukong's command, a quick stamp, he can't get them away. Centaur's already gone down, and now you really start to see Razor and all of Team Liquid just fall apart. They got the Relic on the Clinks trying to get that little bit of bonus damage to find a kill, but Prodigy just sustain. You didn't even get through the Necro's Aegis of the immortal. And now the jump forward, a perfect hit onto Mickey. He's got a couple of one charges to bring him back up again as FN dives in pretty damn deep. The Ghost Round's giving him protection. Tiger wants that same level of protection, but he doesn't have it. Mickey moving back to the fountain. He's so low on life, 100 HP, barely surviving. Who do you go on? DM sees him. FN feels like an interesting target, but remember, he's still got the Aegis Immortal available. Tiger slapped down by the Battler Strike. Controlled by the pip, no supernova available anymore. In fact, Rubik is taking his place as the Phoenix. They are just trashing Liquid today. This didn't even seem close in either game. Like Liquid had a little bit of a... They showed some signs of life for the first, I want to say 15 minutes, and then they just consecutively lost every fight, every move, the map, the Roche, the game. It's just over. It really Something is. Like? They're trying to battle at the last points here, but it feels like Liquid are just in it for the thrills. That's GG. Prodigy. You know what the best the best thing about this lower bracket final is that the grand final should be a hell of a lot better. Because uh, Team Secret <laughs> may actually have a team coming in there with big confidence to battle them.